What up, what up? Welcome on into Inside Baylor Sports, the official daily podcast of Baylor Athletics. On today's show, Baylor baseball head coach Mitch Thompson and freshman Ashleen Core from Baylor Women's Golf stop by. We'll also talk Baylor softball as they uh, welcome back the 2014 team this weekend versus UCF in BJ Edgecombe. Officially signs his national letter of intent to play here at Baylor for men's hoops. All that and more coming up on the show. It's Thursday, April 18th, 2024. Justin Hoff alongside general manager of Baylor Plus, Edward Korn. Edward, we can finally talk about VJ. Man, I've been wanting to talk about VJ for a long, long time. And uh, this dude is uh, box office. This dude's another one of those guys that's going to come in. I was watching the Nike, uh, Nike Hoop Summit this past weekend. I watched McDonald's All-American game. He's a dunker. He's a shooter. I mean, he's your typical 6'4", 200 pounds. He kind of reminds me of, you know, Bradley Beal, Victor Oladipo a little bit. Uh, man, this guy's going to be so fun to watch here with Baylor. I'm excited. I don't know what I'm more excited about, to be back on the podcast in such short notice or to have VJ come into – to Waco, but it's good to be here with you, Justin. And yeah, I, I mean, you just watch VJ. He's ready. He could have played, he could have played this past year uh for Baylor and he would have fit right in. He he's in a grown man body. He's gonna be league ready, just like the past three or four guys who have come through here um after one year. But man, I'm excited. It's gonna be an exciting year with him and super excited that we can now talk publicly about it instead of just being excited amongst ourselves here at Baylor. Yeah, or just texting each other and stop calling yeah. me about him. When's he going to sign? But yeah, he's originally from the Bahamas and would love to play down there in the battle for Atlantis. Unfortunately, you have to go every four years and it hasn't been enough years, but maybe there's an opportunity to do something um, down there. We'll, we'll have to see when the schedule comes out later this summer. But McDonald's All-American, Jordan Brand Classic, Nike Hoop Summit played for the world team there. I did a great job right now living up in New York. And so this is an individual, though, who really, honestly, really a, a great story. And I look forward to, to us being able to talk about this and really chronicle the story on Baylor Plus. This is an individual who was originally ranked 153rd in the composite rankings. He just got better and better and better all the way up. Now he's a top five, five-star All-American. And you know, Justin, what he does have too, he's got all the tools to be a good player and he's got a great name. He does. His original, well, his uh, real name, if you will, not original name, is Valdez, yeah. short for VJ Edgecomb. Yeah. So, uh, let's awesome name. That pronunciation That's star, right at the end. star power name right there. Yeah, and I, I liked uh, what we got coming out. Uh, you know, I'm not a DJ. It's a DJ. I see what uh, Scott uh, Day was doing. Uh, some of the VJ, it's a VJ, right? You know the song. Who sings that, by the way? I couldn't tell you. You tell me. Okay, you, you need to get up with your music. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be, uh, yeah, but he picked Baylor over Duke and Kentucky. So beat out uh, a couple Blue Bloods. And so obviously, you need to know right there. Yeah, last week there was a lot going on around here. And, and you know, VJ, I know, was, was keeping an eye on what was going on here in Waco and Lexington and all those things, but it worked out. He's a Baylor Bear. And, uh, yeah, just incredible story that he originally, you know, a couple years ago, 153rd, all the way up to top five. I want to find out and, and talk to him about how he got better and just that chip on his shoulder. He's got one of those. I, I think he's just built different. He done a, uh, did an interview recently where he was talking about, like, he never settles. He's always playing with a chip on his shoulder. Um, he's going for it. And so I think he's just got a different mindset, different mentality. And I think naturally when you have these five-star freshmen come in, you want to compare them to recent five stars like Keontae and Jacoby and Eve. And, and quite honestly, Edward, I think they're all just different, right? They and are. so I think VJ is going to be in his own class, but man, is he going to be good because he can do it inside. He can do it outside. Yeah. And I, I he's just a different type of player. You know, I, I think a lot of, fans might look at someone like Jacoby who came in this past year. It's that prototypical NBA style two, three guard who can, who can handle the ball. But VJ, he's, I think he's a little more physical at the rim. I think he's, he's a defender and I think all of that's going to show up and it's already showing up. If you watch some of his highlights and, and some of his high school stuff, it, it's just really impressive what he's doing 
at his age, just the body that he's in and, and the way that he can he can move around on the court right now. So I'm excited. And I agree. I, I think he's a different player, but it, it's going to be fun. Yeah, ultra athletic, a developing three point shot. I think Jacoby came in with more in that area, and then defensively just gets after it. And so yeah. I think Baylor fans are going to love watching VJ Edgecomb at the Foster this next season. Looking forward to that. Uh, also looking forward to this upcoming weekend, Baylor softball, bringing back the 2014 team that went to the World Series. Uh, you know, obviously, Edward, you are originally from Arkansas, and we know the Hogs and the SEC got some good softball out oh, of yeah. that league, as does the Big 12. But it's going to be really cool for this team to come back this weekend against UCF, a very important weekend for Baylor softball. I know Baylor Plus will be out there this weekend. Oh, yeah, we'll be out there and we're going to be uh, sitting down with some of those gals from the 2014 team. And we're going to be putting together a piece that that looks back. It's a 10 year anniversary, like like Justin mentioned. And we're going to put together a little historical piece for Baylor fans to uh, to watch, enjoy and and relish those memories. It's the I've, I've been doing some research right about this team. Obviously, I wasn't here 10 years ago, but the biggest comeback in women's college World Series history was that team it's really impressive i watched some of that some of that game today and yeah that team was electric so i'm excited for them to be in town and for them to get honored uh really cool really special and yeah big big uh big series this weekend for uh for the current team yeah kentucky that was the kentucky game and it's one of those things too i know your casual viewer will uh casual fan will watch obviously baylor football watch both basketballs and then maybe have a niche sport and or watch the teams in postseason. And so in softball and baseball, when it gets to May and June, you're flipping through the channels. There's not quite as much collegiate sports, right? You got the NBA, the NHL, some MLB. And uh, yeah, you got those those playoffs going on, but then you get around to some of these softball games and you catch yourself on a game like that, 2014 with a comeback. It's quite the story. So looking forward to hearing about that uh, coming up here in the next couple of weeks. And uh, this weekend, as we said, UCF coming into town, uh, Baylor, they sit 22 and 18 overall, 5 and 13 in Big 12 play. And UCF, they enter the weekend 25 and 15 overall in 10 and 8 in conference. 6 30 uh, coming up tomorrow night at Getterman Stadium. 6 30, 2 o'clock, and 12 o'clock are the games coming up this weekend. Don't forget, you can catch Inside Baylor Sports every weekday. You can also watch the video version for free over at BaylorPlus.com and on the Baylor Athletics YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, rate, and review the pod. We're now joined by Baylor baseball head coach, Mitch Thompson. Uh, coach, your team has won eight of its last nine games, five straight Big 12 games. What's been the key to your success as of late? No, the guys are just playing well. You know, we've uh, we've, we've kind of found a, a couple little, little changes that we've made in the lineup and uh, given some other guys some opportunities. They've taken the ball and run with it helped our offense out uh but we're, we're we're playing good baseball the guys are the guys are throwing the ball well on the mound we're we're competing at the plate we're playing good defense it's there's no miracles to this thing it's a it's a you know you, you take care of those three things and all of a sudden the team starts playing a little bit better so uh, it's been it's been a fun stretch here we need to keep it going in terms of confidence and momentum baseball seems like a game when you're playing four games a week that can be a real thing right well, it's definitely a real thing, but that, you know, you just got to keep moving forward. Um, you know, whether you, whether you uh, win or whether you lose, it doesn't matter at that point in time. The next, the next thing is the next thing and you better get yourself refocused. You know, if you, if you lose a series, you've got to get refocused. You've got to come back and get after it the next week. And you got to try and make, make the changes and do the things that you need to do to, to, to be successful there. Uh, and if you win, you got to do the exact same thing. You got to turn the page and keep moving forward uh, because there's there's more coming and it just doesn't stop. That's the thing. You know, there's four games a week. It doesn't stop. So um, don't sit and pat yourself on the back too long and don't kick yourself in the tail too long. It's time to move forward and get to the next one. Speaking of uh, they got those cougar tails out there in BYU, you guys were out there. I saw Max had had a, a couple, hopefully he shared that with someone, but uh Man, what a series it was. First off, the the stadium, picturesque. I mean, right there in the mountains. What was that like just to to take that in? Yeah, it's my first time ever to BYU and, and first time to Utah. And uh, beautiful state, really nice people. 
people were incredible. Uh, the, you know, the fans were incredible to our fans. Um, you know, my wife and daughter were there and, and they, they, they communicated about how the fans were coming up and bringing them here's popcorn. Here's a drink. Here's a, here, here's, here's a cougar tail, uh, all that good stuff. So pretty, pretty neat experience there. Um, but yeah, the ballpark's picturesque. I mean, it's, uh, it's probably as good of a backdrop as there is in any, in any sport in, in the country. Um, so, so really a neat experience to go there and experience it. Not always a fun place to pitch. The ball does travel pretty good there. Uh, but, uh, but it was a, it was a good weekend for us and a, and a good experience for sure. How about that Saturday game? You look at the box score, 18 to 17. What a wild game. Obviously, Hey, you got the, uh, you got the win. You're happy with that, but, uh, take us through that game and what it was like to manage that one. Well, you know, we're in the game and, and we're, we're up on them pretty good. 18 to five, I think. And, um, you know, at, at that point in time, it's getaway, it's getaway day. So you're thinking that the 10 run rule is in effect. Let's get six more outs and get out of here. Um, and then you're fighting for your life and you're just, you know, you're, you're truly fighting for your life. And, uh, thankfully we, you know, Kobe Andrade came in and gave us a, a really good, uh, couple innings there at the end of the ball game, uh, that, 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 that helped us, helped us win that thing. And, uh, uh, ended up being, yeah, it was 18 to five. And the next thing you know, it's, it's 18 to 17. And I called up the players, uh, in the dugout after the seventh inning. And I said, Hey, I said, it's 18 to 14. We got a four run lead. I said, uh, if you would have told us at the beginning of the day that we're going to go into the eighth inning with a four run lead, we would have taken it a hundred times out of a hundred. So I said, momentum is, is false. There is no such thing. We have a four run lead, go win the game. And, uh, and they, you know, promptly, we promptly went out there and they got three more on us and now it was 18 to 17. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I think that you got to give BYU credit too. They just never quit and they, they were playing with great freedom. And then they got to the point where, Hey, we might win this thing. And the m monkey jumped on their back a little bit and, we had probably the easiest inning that we had had the last four or five innings on the mound, one, two, three inning. We're out of there with the win. So uh, we'll take it. A win's a win's a win. One to nothing, 18 to 17. Who cares? Let's move forward. You know, the only thing that, the only thing that takes a hit on the 18 to 17 is the team ERA. Uh, but the, but the win loss column is the only thing that we really care about. Yeah. I love that. Uh, I'll, I'll say this much too, just really, uh, um, proud of of where this team has come from last year, and to see the team kind of midway through the conference season here, eight and seven, to get over five hundred that that means something to this program right now, right, Coach? Well, there's no question. I mean, we're fighting for that. We've been fighting. We've been behind the behind the eight ball on that uh, right from the first week of the season, you know. And uh, and I and I've I've said it multiple times. Uh, I scheduled too hard. We had to. You know, we had a couple things that were already prepared for us for this year when I got the job and I, I kept them and and here we go. You know, we're coming off of last year and we're starting off at Globe Life against three teams that are really good. And, uh, you know, you don't win one of those games first weekend. But at the same time, now you've lost, uh, you know, three, three of your starting position players. And then we lose another one a couple weeks later. And so we've been forced to, to play depth to play guys that uh, we didn't necessarily think were going to be in the lineup and playing. And the fun part for us as coaches is to see those guys that, you know, we knew we had better depth. We knew we had better players, um, but the start of the season didn't show it. And because some of our guys were out, we had to, we had to shuffle some things around and move some people around. And, you know, I, I use a guy like Danny Altman as a, as an example. I mean, Danny wasn't probably projected to be in the lineup. But, you know, from opening, basically opening weekend on, I mean, Danny's been in there, or maybe not opening week, but maybe right after the first week, Danny's been in there, really performed well, played second base, center field, left field. Uh, I mean, been, been versatile enough to move around. You know, Cole Posey's now in the lineup playing first base. He's never played first base before in his life. Uh, you know, but we're moving guys around. We're finding the right combination and it's, and it's clicking and it's, it's, it's been fun to see the guys continue to fight together and to work together to make that happen. 
Yeah, you got a lot of guys on your team that, that just seem like they're uh, your kind of guys, right? And Cole Posey would be one of them. Enzo Apodaca, who picked up the Big 12 Player of the Week. Great honor for him. I don't care what game it is. I mean, Enzo just – he comes to play every every night, right? I mean, this is a guy that uh, – professional hitter, uh, just does all the little things and very successful this season. Yeah, that's really that, that's really how I'd kind of describe him too. You know, uh, started two years at Gonzaga, had good seasons. Uh, went to the Cape Cod League, was a Cape Cod League All-Star this last summer, uh, you know, was in the portal. Uh, outfield play was not really, outfielders was not really our biggest need, but Enzo showed an interest in us, and um, and, and Coach Dillon, you know, got on it and uh, as, as a recruiting co- guy and, uh, and, you know, kind of just fought for him. And, you know, when I started pulling up video of him, I was going, we've got to take this guy. We don't have anybody like him. And, uh, and so Enzo has been a really welcome addition to the club and, uh, and he is, he's a professional hitter. He's going to give you a really, he's going to give you five really good at bats every day. He may not get a hit every time. Uh, he's going to get more hits than, 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 than most of them, most guys, but this, this guy's going to give you a professional at bat and he's, uh, you know, he's currently leading our team in RBIs and leading our team in hitting. And, and so he's been a really welcome addition out of the transfer portal. When you think about uh, any coach, any sport, yeah, he's in really one of those best available kind of guys in the portal. But, uh, you know, a lot of times a a team will take on the mantra, the attitude, the mindset of the head coach. And I think that your team is exactly that. You're a scrapper. You're a fighter. You're going to be down there for every out. And that's exactly what this team's about. Uh, how much do you pride yourself on that? And, and do you do you believe in that, that they're going to kind of take the mindset of you as the – Well, they, they always do take the mindset of the head coach and the, and the mentality of them. But, you know, I mean, this is not a one-man show by any any stretch of imagination. I mean, I've got really good coaches, and we've said that from the very, very first time I got hired as to who I was going to bring with me. These guys can really coach. They're really good at what they do. They connect with the players. And, you know, Zach Dillon, Jim Blair – James Leverton on the pitching staff, and then uh, you know our, our 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 director of operations and director of uh, player development, and, and Darren Thomas and Brian Furlong. I mean, we couldn't have better people, and so um, we all are doing our job. We're all working as hard as we can at it. You know, um, you know, Coach Lev's working on trying to trying to keep all the pitchers going in the right direction. Coach Furlong's getting us all the all the analytics and things that we need so that we can you know, evaluate our players and evaluate the opponents and how do we prepare our scouting reports and everybody's pulling, pulling, pulling their weight, uh, you know, and, and I'm the guy that has to do these interviews and these things like that for the most part. But uh, there, there's a whole lot of work being done by a lot of people making this happen. And, and listen, we're not, we're not in any, by any stretch of the imagination where we want to be yet. We're not even close, you know, um, but our kids are working as hard as they can possibly work. We've made definite progress and we've just got to keep going. Um, and, you know, we've got, we've got tough stretches ahead of us. There's going to be some ups and downs and there's going to be some highlights and low lights, and we've just got to keep going. But uh, I'm proud where we're at right now. We've caught up a little bit. We're almost to the 500 mark for the, for the overall season, which, you know, when you start one and seven and are playing, you know, arguably one of the tougher schedules in America, um, you know, after coming off of last year, that's a, that's a step forward. And, uh, and to be where we're at right now, halfway through the big 12 season with the winning record um, is definitely something that, that I'm proud of um, because we didn't start off big 12 play well either. We were started off 0 and 3. So we're eight of our last 12 in conference and, and that's a big step for us. Yeah, let's keep that train rolling. And yeah. uh, as you said, this weekend you'll have a chance to to get over 500 overall, and you'll have Kansas come into town. Kansas always a, a tough opponent, having a, a solid season. They're scrappy as well. Uh, green and gold weekend, great weekend though for fans. I think now that you know basketball season's in uh, behind us, it's time to now look over at at baseball. And there's a great opportunity to come out to the ballpark and cheer this team on. I know that's big for you to have the crowd support an opportunity this weekend with Kansas coming to town. Yeah, we need the crowd out there, no doubt. And, you know, on, and uh, and you're right with basketball being over and basketball being as big as it is here. And now we can all take a breath and thank the good Lord that Coach Drew stuck around and, and believes in Baylor and, and wants to be a bear for life. I mean, that's exciting stuff. 
for all of us. Uh, it's exciting for us in the baseball program too, but we, we need, we need all that passion that we can get this week. And we need to pack this ballpark out. Uh, we need to continue to grow. You know, there's, there's recruits watching, there's people watching uh, all the time as to how we're doing and where we're going. And, 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 you know, it's, it's a process. It's not something that's just going to flip on a, on a, in a, in a second to get us back to where we want to be, but we're taking steps that way. And we definitely need the crowd support there this weekend. It's a big home series. Uh, we've got three more big 12 home series and, and every one of them will be really important. Um, this is the biggest one of the year right now. Cause it's the one right in front of us. Well, coach, I uh, really appreciate your time. Looking forward to the weekend ahead. And thanks again. Thanks, Justin. Appreciate you. Thanks better fans. Appreciate Mitch's time. Big weekend ahead for baseball, Edward. You think about the team right now. They sit with an overall record of 17 and 18, a chance to get to the 500 mark this weekend with a series win over Kansas. Baylor right now sitting in fifth place in the Big 12, eight and seven, and two more wins than they had all of last season in conference already. So uh, we've talked about it many times that the building blocks are there and this team continues to improve. Yeah, shout out Baylor baseball, man. What a job that that Mitch Thompson and that staff has done so far this season. You think about um, just all the injuries they've dealt with coming into the year and during the year and just the way that they fought. And, I mean, they're hot right now. So if you can catch the games this weekend, definitely get out there. Um, but, yeah, they're, uh, they've done a phenomenal job, and it's, it's exciting to see that we're, we're, uh, we're in the race in the Big 12. And, you know, we've, we've already – surpassed the bar from last year and i think that that coach thompson um is going to continue to to steer this thing in the right direction speaking of hot it's supposed to be 89 degrees today are you ready for that here in april are you adjusting you know you've almost been here now a year in the state of texas have you adjusted to this heat uh we'll see i got here last august and so i caught the tail end of what was just terrible terrible weather it was like 110 every day it felt like it was in a microwave every time i went outside it's terrible so now i'm you know i wouldn't say i'm adjusted to it but i'll uh, i'll try to stay indoors as it's much not, as i can it's really not that terrible and i'll say it's late at bad. night when it's like 85 it's good grilling weather as my yeah. mom would once tell me many times edward suck it up and deal with it well i guess i'll have to i don't have much of a choice and i'll say this too you know find somebody with a pool i got a pool but uh that can help you some in the summer. Invite me over. I'll be there. Okay. You got to be nicer to me. But mm. uh, you got that. And then the spring and the fall are just so much better here in Texas. So you get the benefit there. Oh, yes, yeah. there are some hot days, especially if you have to work out there and uh, mow some lawn. It's, uh, it can be rough on like mid to late June uh, having to mow. And you shouldn't be mowing at 3 or 4 o'clock in, in the afternoon. That's mornings or nights. But Okay. Neither here nor there. I'm ready for the summer, and I'm ready for Baylor baseball coming up this weekend. Come out to Baylor Ballpark. The fun begins uh, coming up uh, on Friday at 6.30. Go give that new video board a look as well. Follow Baylor Plus today on X, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. It's the official content network of Baylor Athletics. Think Netflix for your Baylor Bears. Download the app on your mobile device and sign up for your free seven-day trial today at BaylorPlus.com. Let's now welcome in freshman Ashleen Core from Baylor Women's Golf. Ashleen, uh, before we get into the big weekend ahead, how has your freshman season gone so far here at Baylor? It's gone good. It's been a really great experience, and I'm really happy to be here. It's been amazing. Now for you, obviously your older sister, if people are thinking uh, another uh, core out there, Gerline here, and I'm sure you get – a lot of that, right? You're the younger sister. Mm -hmm. You hear that all the time. I had older yeah. brothers. That's got to be a little annoying, right? A little bit? Yeah, a touch, but it's part of life. Like, yep. yeah. And she's a great player, too. Yeah, but she's just, amazing. Uh, I was trying to connect. I was trying to connect <laughs> on the same level there. I was, I was annoyed <laughs> when I was a kid growing up with that. But for her, you were around the program some. Obviously saw her play. Mm -hmm. How much did that familiarity help you in your transition here to college? Um, it's helped a lot. I would say like any question I have about anything, like I don't go to like Jay or Carly. I go to her first. Um, she's always like my go-to, like with any questions or anything. And she's just helped me a lot, like transition from being at home to being here. What's that biggest challenge? What's the biggest adjustment? I guess being away from home, but 
I mean, the golf is the same. You're still competing, except this time you have um, teammates that are there to support you. But I would say that's the biggest. Yeah, and of course, hey, you've trained all your life. You've competed in uh, tournaments across the country. Um, so this is nothing new about, you know, what you experience here. It's just a, mm -hmm. another level and, and wearing the green and gold out there. Uh, what's it been like, though, with your teammates experiencing that team play, which is a little different than individuals? I love it, actually. Getting off the course, like, after a round, and they're always there to support you, no matter if you played bad or played good. Um, I love, like, waving to the person behind me playing, like, when I get off the green. It's it's just so nice to have that support around. Now, does that impact you, though, when you're playing? I've been on the course uh, covering Baylor men's and women's golf, and you, you feel the momentum. You can almost feel the momentum of a player doing well in front of you. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel that? And if things go off the rails, how do you keep your emotions mentally in check? I would say I'm pretty good about not really letting how others are playing like affect me, I would say. Um, I like to know because I, I just like to know like how our team is doing. But I would say I just try to like focus on myself and my own game. And Jay has walked with me like almost every round. So it's nice to just be able to like talk to him and like keep my mind distracted and stuff. One thing you don't want to do is uh, get on the scores and start checking everybody else's scores. I'm I would say I'm a touch, a little bit of a leaderboard checker, but okay. not as much in college. No. <laughs> well, I'll say this much. Uh, the fact that when I'm covering it, I'm checking the leaderboard all the time. Mm. I mean, my phone is frying because I'm trying to keep up with the scores. <laughs> so I uh, need a little extra charger there. But this weekend, obviously starting today with the Big 12 Championship, what's the team's mindset entering uh, this weekend? I think we have a good mindset. We believe that, like, we can play really well today and, like, the next few days. And for most of us, this is a familiar course. And I think we're just ready to go out and just shoot some good scores. Okay, for you, the Houston Oaks Country Club, that's where you guys are playing starting today in Hockley, Texas. You're an H-Town native. Uh, you've talked about this course a little bit. How familiar with it are you? And what's the, the challenges to the course? I've played it a lot. I've, I have like quite a few friends out there and actually my high school coach is a member out there. So we went out a lot. Um, I actually really like the course. It's, it's a good layout. It's a touch long, but I don't think we're playing it too long this week. Like when I played the U S open qualifier there, we were like tipped out on every hole, but I would say the challenge, there's a lot of bunkers. And then it's very tree lined. But other than that, it's a really good layout. And for you guys, you know, do you put, uh, you know, obviously it's the championship. Is there an extra level of a focus entering the weekend and, and knowing the importance of, hey, you're bringing all the Big 12 teams together and you're going for a trophy? I mean, in my mindset, it's just like every other tournament. I need to just focus on like what I know I do best. and keep the same mindset that I always do, but it's just, it's just still golf. <laughs> and that's why you're playing. And that's why I'm watching, right? Mm -hmm. Cause if I don't put too much, I'll try too hard and then start screwing up the shots and start getting some double bogeys and whatnot, but yeah, uh, not good. A weather upper eighties and humid today and tomorrow could have yep. some rain on Saturday weather. How much of a factor can that play in changing the course conditions all weekend? I guess if it gets really windy, then it gets a little tough. But, I mean, I'm used to the heat and the humidity being from Houston. I don't know how much the other girls are. Um, but it's definitely going to be one of the hotter tournaments this weekend. And then we just played last week in Dallas, and it was raining the whole time. So rain doesn't have too much of an effect, but it's still a little annoying. Do you have uh, favorite conditions to play? Like if you can uh, talk to Mother Nature ahead of time, hey, <laughs> this for weather. 70 degrees, partly like cloudy and like barely any wind. Okay. That sounds mm -hmm. pretty good. I, I get the wind part. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. The humidity, does that impact? I mean, it's just probably just a tougher. Uh, it doesn't make uh, the ball go as far 
it goes a touch shorter because the air is so thick. Okay. Um, so like coming from Houston to like Waco, it's much drier here. So I hit it like a touch further out here in Waco. Okay. So that's why Jerry Hill can hit it so far here. Okay. Uh, that's <laughs> a different day. Well, Ashleen, Hey, super proud that you're here. Uh, you. Love seeing that last name continue to uh, do great things for Baylor women's golf and good luck this week. Thank you. Sikum. Baylor women's golf gets underway today in Hockley, Texas. You can follow Baylor women's golf social media accounts for the latest scores and updates around that program. Of course, a big, uh, nice win the other night. Uh, well, yesterday, uh, Baylor women's tennis taking down West Virginia in the big 12 championship. So advancing and recently Baylor plus visited with women's tennis and you guys have to check it out on Baylorplus.com. Oh yeah. We've got a, we've got a great episode of the follow. It's our most recent one that we just put out and, uh, and shout out coach Gravano for, for letting us in and, Miking them up during the SMU match, which they won. And we got with some some parents of Sierra Berry. Uh, just really good stories there. Um, and, and, yeah, we, we put together a nice story. And you should go check it out. Shout out women's tennis. Yeah, and, and Joey's a great guy. And I love some of the moments. And he's just real. I love the moments where the camera was kind of back a little bit. And he couldn't really tell. He was mic'd up for the whole match. But yeah. he or no one on the team could really feel it. And there was an intensity about him after the doubles point that went to SMU. And so if you're a recruit or someone out there watching or just a fan of, of tennis or Baylor sports and you come across this video, I think that's pretty impressive. So, okay, that'll do it for today's edition of Inside Baylor Sports, a sport and story production. Thanks for listening. For Edward Corrin, I'm Justin Hoff. Have a great Thursday and sick and bears.